Hi guys, welcome to Bite Size Bible Study. This week we're going to be looking at part three of the Renew Course and Paul's going to be talking about good and evil. So sit back, relax and enjoy. Hello again, this is part three of the Renew Course. This is a course we've been doing. Uh, it's written by Carl Scott and this is a video version we're doing. It's an abridged version but hopefully it will give you a taste of of what the Renew Course is all about. And session three we're doing is good and evil. Now, it's an interesting one, this is, because it's often a thing that people bring up. If God's so good, how come there's evil in the world? And it's often a, a, an accusation they bring against God. When anything goes wrong, oh, that's an act of God, even insurance people have, oh, that's an act of God. It's always if something bad's happened, God's blamed for it. Or people will say, oh, if, God, if there was a God, why doesn't he do something about these things that are happening in the world? Why isn't God there? And they're always blaming God on there. And we have to look. So if God is good, how come there's bad in this world? And it's a question, obviously, when you first become a Christian and people have been Christians a while, they always ask. So Carl looks at this and we're going to read some from the what he's written about it, and then we're going to look at it from the Bible's point of view. So, session three, this is good and evil. And Carl puts it like this. Everything originally was created very good according to God. Yet, a, can a created thing have a choice not to be good? A caring parent will warn children if something could harm them. But doesn't a caring parent also train children to make their own choices and becomes responsible for their own choices. In the Garden of Eden, there were lots of trees given to humankind for food at any time. There was also one tree of life, and one tree of the knowledge of good and evil. God warned man first that he should not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, because the result would be death. God never lied to man. There was no evidence. God could not be trusted. When man was given the partnership of the first woman, humankind had everything they needed for an ideal life. They were simply asked not to eat from the tree of knowledge, good and evil. Did they give it any thought? The choice to go against God's instruction at first never seemed to bother them. God is love, and God's kind of love does not force anyone to love him back. If we only love God because we have to, then there is no freedom of choice to choose to love him. What kind of love is that? He respects us enough to allow us to make our own decisions. He wants to help us always to make the best choices, but we decide. Now, that's an amazing thing, that God loved us enough to give us a choice. You know, people are, often think, Oh God, if he's all this powerful, why doesn't he eradicate this? Why doesn't he sort this out? But you can't if he's given us a choice. So we have to look out from the Bible's point of view. Why did he give us a choice? And why? what was it all about? How come we fell? How come we missed it? So we have to go back to the book of beginnings, which is Genesis. And we're going to look into Genesis chapter 1. And verse 25, and God, and it says, and God, this is in the New King, J, King James Version again. And God made the beast of the earth according to its kind, cattle according to its kind, and everything that creeps on the earth according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and everything, every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God. He created him, male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth, and subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, See, I have given you every herb that yields seed on the face of the earth of the earth, and every tree whose fruit yields to it shall be for good, it shall be for food. And this is what God had said. So originally, 
we were given all of the fruit of the field, uh, all the trees and everything, but he said, have dominion. God gave us authority over this earth. He gave us man, if we made in his image, he gave us authority on the earth. So we decided we had dominion over all the cattle, over the birds, the fish, the sea. And you can see man's done that. He's had dominion. Man is the most successful species on planet Earth because God had given us dominion. There isn't any any beast that is on this earth that man hasn't dominated and still dominates. We have uh, ability and we can see people say, oh, well, man's wiped out so many species. That was in the choice that we've done. God gave us dominion. He didn't say go and kill everything. Unfortunately, that's a consequence of sin that we are, do go out and tend to kill everything off. That is a part of the fall. But originally, that wasn't what it was like. God had given us the, the herbs and the fruit of the field for our food, not for animals. But this was a consequence of sin. But you can see he's given us authority over them. So let's see what happened a bit further on. And it's in Genesis chapter 3. So it says... Going from verse 1, it says, Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. So we've already read God had said to have dominion. So we have authority, that means authority, over every animal. So when Satan appeared, he appeared as a serpent. And it says, And he said to the woman, has God indeed said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat it. So God had told them they could eat anything, which we'd heard when we did the teaching from Carl. It says, but said of the knowledge, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. But we can eat anything else. So they've got everything they need. They don't need anything else. And the woman said, nor shall you touch it lest you die. Now she's added a bit on here. God said, don't eat of it. He didn't say you can't touch it and you'll die. He said, don't eat of it and then you'll die. Then the serpent said to the woman, you shall not surely die. For God knows that in the day that you've eaten, your eyes will be opened and you'll be like God knowing good and evil. Well, that was a lie straight away because they'd already been made in the image of God. So if they're in the image of God, they're like God anyway. But this is the power of deception. And this is how Satan cons people. So the woman saw that the tree was good for food. It was pleasant to the eyes and a tree desirable to make one wise. So what she's doing here, she's using natural senses. And that's what we do. So when things come in to distract us, it's things that we like. So she was using her natural senses. She wasn't taking any authority here. She wasn't doing anything about it, but she was using natural senses and saying, well, that looks really nice, this does. And this is a lesson for all of us. So when Satan comes in to tempt you, he doesn't tempt you with something that's horrible that you don't like. He tempts you with something that you like. So for me, I don't like broccoli. If Satan come along and said, oh, steal all this broccoli, I wouldn't, it wouldn't even be it. even a thought in my head because I think it's horrible, so I wouldn't be, be tempted by it at all. But if it was something I liked, then it's a different thing, and that's what Satan does. He tempts you with things that you like or things you have a desire for. So let's see what the consequence is here. So when the so woman saw it was good for food and that it's pleasant for the eyes, this is in verse 6, a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. Amazing. Adam's there, and he says, nothing. What had God said to him? Have dominion over all the cattle, all the beasts of the field, creeping things even in the sea, have dominion. He could have said, no, stop that, shut up, we're not going to do that. He should have taken authority over the situation. But what did he do? Said nothing. 
absolutely nothing. In fact, he goes, okay, well, I'll have a bit of that, just the same as what Eve had done. He'd, he was completely went along with it. And it says, verse 7, Then their eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made a covering from themselves. So what do you do? First thing when you're caught with anything, you try and cover it up. Now, why? Because that's the first thing. The first sin that anybody does is they covered it up. They try and cover it up. And that's the same. When people are caught, you know, yourself, you can be in situations, you know, when you get caught, you think, oh, I'll try to cover this up or some, you've done something. And people try cover it up. We hear it all the time. Criminals, they have people and say, um, give me an alibi. Let's cover it up. Where does that come from? Here. <laughs> the first sin. They covered it up. We try cover up our sin, cover up our nakedness. We cover it up. We try to cover it up. So we pretend God won't really know about what I've done. But God knows everything. And it says, let's go to um, verse 11. And God said, who told you? And God's having a conversation with him here. You were naked. Have you eaten of the tree which I commanded that you should not eat? Now, God isn't asking a question he doesn't know here. He knows what they've done, but he's trying to get them to be honest with what they've done. What's their reaction? Do they go, yeah, okay, we confess, we've done it. No, what does says? The woman said, um, the man said, the woman who you gave to, to be with me, she gave me the tree and ate. So the first thing Adam does is blame the woman. <laughs> Amazing, isn't it? He didn't, he didn't put his hand up and said, yeah, I should have, you give me authority, you give me dominion, I should have done that, but I didn't. No, what does he do? He, he blames the woman and said, well, she gave it to me, so I, I, I had to eat it. It's her fault. And then the Lord God said to the woman, verse 13, what is this that you've done? And the woman said, the serpent deceived me and I ate. So she blamed the devil. She blamed the serpent. Again, she could have had authority, she could have taken them in, but it's the blame game. And that's what happens, isn't it? When we cook, we always try and blame. And you can see it in relationships when people have done something wrong, and we can all do, I do it. We blame somebody else, don't we? Well, the reason I did that is because they did this, or she did that. And so the reason I did that is because she did this. No, we have to take responsibility. We have to take responsibility for the things that we've done wrong. And that's what we have to do is come to God. When we've done something wrong, we have to take responsibility for it. Let's have a look what God's plan is in this. So having a choice, people think it's somehow it's unfair that God had done that. But can you imagine if you had no choice? God didn't create us like a robot to have no choice. They they got everything. There was only one tree that he said don't eat of. One. There was thousands of trees. There's thousands still of trees, species, thousands of and there was only one he said don't eat of. But that's how it can get you. That one thing bugs you. You know, you can have a perfect day. But there was one thing that was wrong, and all you focus on is that one thing. And that's how Satan works. He puts that one thing in there. Now, is God unfair that he gave us a free choice? No. Can you imagine just being correct? You have no choice in anything. You have to do that. That's what slaves are like. And God didn't want slaves. We're not created as slaves. If you're a slave, you're worthless. You have no worth. That, and you can see it. Even in the Second World War, the Nazis used slaves. So we can't hear, you know, we can look back a thousand years ago, oh, slavery is really bad, or hundred years ago when we, we took people from Africa and made them slaves. But even in the modern day, slavery still goes on. And as a slave, you have no choice, you have no rights. They can kill you, do anything to you. They just abuse you, and when they've are, are, are done with you, they can kill you. God didn't want that. He created us. Let's have a look in Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19, and it says, I call heaven and earth as a witness today against you that I have set before you, this is God saying, life and death, blessing and cursing. 
Therefore, he actually gives you a hint here what to do. So as God says, I've given you a choice, life and death, blessing and cursing. And he says, therefore, choose life that both you and your descendants may live. So God's even saying to us, look, I'm, I'm giving you a hint to you. Choose the life. Don't choose the death. Choose life. And it says that you may love the Lord your God, that you may obey his voice and that you may cling to him for he is your life and the length of your days and that you may dwell in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob to give them. This is God speaking to children of Israel, but it's the same to us today, saying, choose life, have a relationship with me. Don't choose the evil, choose the good. We've got a choice. You can choose evil or you can choose good. And God's saying, choose the good. Who's the good? Jesus Christ. And we touched on, we looked at Jesus Christ in, in the previous one. And the only way to back to God, to have a relationship with God is choosing the life that's in Jesus Christ. So we're coming to the end of this teaching and I'll give you a few more scriptures from the teaching in the Renew course. So uh, if we look in, you've got James chapter 1 verse 13 to 15, Romans 5 verse 12, Romans 3 verse 23. These are all scriptures that you can look up in your own time and find out about having a choice, the choice to choose God, the knowledge of good and evil. It's an everyday thing that we have to do. We have a choice though. You can choose to do the right thing. Choose God's way. Be blessed and we'll look at part four in the next session. Thanks Paul. That was great as always. Okay guys, so a lot to think about this week. Are we going to choose to take that responsibility that God's given us. Are we actually going to take that authority that is ours to claim? Or are we just going to sit back and let the whole world just go on without us? Let's look into that. Let's really grab hold of it. And let's grab hold of what that means for us. Let's choose life. Let's choose Jesus. And we'll see you next week. God bless.